Thanks to Logitech G and the G432 7.1 surround sound gaming headset for sponsoring this video. To check out the tech behind the G432, click the link in the description. Yo, Astrid here. I'm still in the RPS video dungeon, but Matthew and Alice have gone over to Gamescom with RPS Deputy Editor Alice Bell to play some of the games on the show floor. And one of those games is Atomicrops. It's a roguelike in a farming simulator mashed up, as if Stardew Valley and Enter the Gungeon had a baby. You farm to make money, you're going to shoot things, finding different items in the world, and discovering cool roguelike synergies. You'll see in the top left corner there's a currency, it looks like a golden bean, currently unnamed, but you use that to buy various different items in the starting area that you're currently taking a look at. One of those things that you can buy is weapons. There are two weapons on the table at the moment, one of them is a flying squirrel gun, it's a little bit difficult to use, but it deals high amounts of damage and enemies that are killed by it drop seeds, which you use to plant things, so it's actually really useful, it's just a risk and reward situation. And then the other weapon is just your standard sniper rifle. You'll see here there are a couple of characters called strangers, you'll get to know them better and you'll be able to buy various items from them using roses, which is one of the plants that you can harvest in the game. You can also eventually marry them. A bit like Harvest Moon, so like classic farming simulator video game stuff. You start a day and you have a little plot of land, you can plant various different things in here like potatoes or flowers or you know, anything else. There are loads of different types of plants from different types of regions in the game that we will get to in just a moment. You start off the game and you can either go east or west. If you go east, you're in this sort of grasslands area that's a little bit more introductory. And if you go west, there's a desert. The desert's a bit tougher. So if you're just starting out, it's probably a good idea to go here. And you come across these camps and they have different enemies guarding different kinds of items. Sometimes it will be one of two livestock that do different things. For instance, cows will automatically water your crops for you. Pigs will automatically dig up the ground and expand that plot for you. Um, and you can also find various other modifiers like scrolls and other like weird items that change how the game works. For instance, there's laxatives, which makes the livestock that you use for your farm produce fertilizer, which is a little bit f***ed up, but that's fine, that's fine. The core loop is basically you wake up in the morning, you plant crops, you go out to collect seeds, you come back and defend crops at night, and you sell those crops in the morning in your starting area, and you use that money that you make to buy more stuff. You have two minutes in a day to go about and explore the world, whatever region of the world you choose, and then you get all of that stuff back to your plot of land to defend it against nasty gribblies. David Martinez described this combo as sort of working seamlessly like a quote, peanut butter and carrot sandwich. We'll just have to take his word on that. So as we return to the plot of land, you'll see all of the plants are dancing. That means they're ready to harvest. It's very cute, they make fun noises. And one of the other things you have to do is maintain this, this plot of land. You have to dig up the ground in order to plant various seeds. You need to keep everything watered so that it can actually grow. You can fertilize things. One of the things you can actually do is something that Martinez mentioned. If you plant four seeds in a sort of two by two square and fertilize them more properly, it'll grow into one massive super plant that you'll see in just a moment. As it reaches dusk, soon it will become nighttime. That's when you'll get various different ways of nasty gribblies coming out like these mole things and also Bundits, they're like little rabbit guys with guns, and they're named like a pun. There are lots of puns in this game, RPS, you know, we love puns, so it's great to see more puns in a game. And so the nighttime portions of the game just become this mad dash to kill everything in sight whilst maintaining your farm and making sure it doesn't get damaged. You also have to plant your seeds, water everything, harvest crops, all whilst you're shooting everything. And you can do that because there is multitasking. You can harvest and fertilize whilst shooting. If you can manage that sort of, that hectic multitasking nightmare, but that's part of the fun. It is a roguelike, so you will eventually die. Um, when you start a new run of Atomic Ops, you can pick a character. Uh, there are only a couple at the moment, and this is the one that we got to see, but when the game comes out in early access, which should be before the end of summer, according to what we've heard, 
there are going to be more characters added as well as more weapons, more items, more animals, more plants, so on and so on. It's going to be it's going to be very regularly updated. There are going to be tractors in the game as well. We didn't see any in this demo, but there are going to be three types that we know of. One that waters your crops, that makes it easier to water crops en masse. There's going to be one that lets you get rid of weeds so that you can expand your, your farmland properly. And there's also one where if you run over enemies in it, it turns them into fertilizer, which is gruesome, but exciting. And at the end of the night, you get picked up by the helicopter and you get taken back to this little base of operations to buy various new weapons, various items, anything you need. You can give roses to the strangers to try and enamour them with yourself, which is a little bit romantic. And some of the weapons you'll see have degradation, so you need to pick up new ones for the next run. We've got a potato assault rifle now, that's exciting. And we just get right back into it and it's just a big cycle of going out, getting seeds, planting the seeds, growing up the plants, selling the plants, making your plot bigger, making your plot bigger, making your plot bigger, making your plot bigger, so on and so on and so on and so on and so on. And it's just this big loop, big exciting farmy shooty loop. Martinez has said that despite it being a roguelike and all roguelikes, you know, largely relying on RNG as an interesting means of mixing things up, that luck isn't hugely going to play a factor. One of the things that he gave as a reference was that if you returned to the starting area and there were a couple of guns that you didn't like and those were the only two guns on the sale, that would be a little bit annoying, but largely the random chance element just mixes up the approach that you take with the game. Now, this is a golden chest map. You pick these up every now and then and they will, they will guide you to golden chests somewhere in the world. That golden gourd is something that this particular golden map has uncovered and it gives you a floaty gourd that circles around you and protects you from bullets, which is really cool and super convenient. Now the time's ticking down, so we've got to return back to the little plot of land and plant more of the seeds and make sure that none of them get damaged by any nasty gribblies. Now on this evening you'll see a boss fight will trigger with a giant snail thing being ridden by one of those bunny bandits, bandits, bandits earlier. You'll encounter a few bosses as you play through Atomicrops and it just makes it even more hectic and challenging but in, a, in an equally fun way. Because now you have to fight a boss, you also need to fight all the various waves that you'll encounter throughout the night, and you'll still need to maintain your farm and grow crops and keep your farmland thriving. Some of the vegetables are worth more than other vegetables, so there's also this game you're playing of prioritising what seeds you plant in what places, and whether you want to just get a massive amount of really cheap seeds, or like a small condensed amount of very expensive seeds. While this fight goes on, there are a couple of other things too that I'll uh, quickly go over. When you first start off, there are going to be two regions available to you. To the east is that grassland and to the west is that desert. But there's also a region above and below you. Throughout your time playing Atomic Robs, you'll pick up items that you can use to build bridges. Or buy items to build bridges in that starting area. Once you have enough of those items, you can, you can build bridges to the two different regions and they will have different environments, different enemies to fight, and also a bunch of different seeds to grow different kinds of plants. As I mentioned earlier, the official release date isn't currently available, but it's going to be launching in early access before the end of summer, as we've heard, so you will be able to play it pretty soon. And while it's in early access, there are plans to bring all sorts of new things into the game, more than what's currently here. So there are going to be more characters, there are going to be special events like a blood moon, and there are going to be new scrolls and items that will come into the game and create even more diversity. And thanks again to Logitech G for sponsoring this video, featuring 50mm audio drivers, a 6mm mic and DTS Headphone X 2.0 surround sound technology under the hood. The G432 headset immerses you in the action and ensures you'll always be heard for a complete gaming experience. Find out how to order yours by following the link in the description. So that is a little bit of Atomicrops. If you found this video a little bit helpful in getting a good idea of what the game's about, give it a like. If you want to see more of our Gamescom coverage over the next few days, subscribe to Rock Paper Shotgun. 
Thanks for watching and see you again soon.